Thanks Imogen. This video is going to be part two of building my IKEA greenhouse cabinet, which you can see behind me there. In my last video about the cabinet, I built it and spoke about some of the changes that I wanted to make. But in this video, I'll be showing you what I've done and talk about the process that I went through to make the cabinet into a greenhouse suitable for keeping plants inside. So when I last left you, the cabinet was pretty much a shell with no shelves or anything inside. I think I'd put one plant in there just for the video. And you wanted to put in wire shelves rather than the glass shelves that come with the cabinet. So you bought a big long piece from Homebase, which is a DIY store in the UK, and got my boyfriend to cut it down into two shelves for me. The piece I got was about six foot long and it made two shelves of the full width of the cabinet with a little bit left over. We then sprayed the shelves with this black spray paint rust protection spray thing. I'd seen this particular brand recommended on some Facebook groups as a good one to use as the greenhouse will be quite humid and so the exposed metal where the wire shelf was cut would be susceptible to rust, which I obviously don't want in the greenhouse. So yeah, we sprayed the shelves and also thought it'd be a good idea to spray the brackets which the shelves would rest on, both for rust protection and also so they blend into the cabinet and are less visible. I think it took about two coats with the spray to make it even, but hopefully now I won't have any problems with rust. Again, I was sort of following recommendations from other people with greenhouse cabinets, so got angle brackets to put into the corners of the cabinet which the shelves would then rest on and the brackets just screw into holes that are already in the side pieces of the cabinet so there's no need to do any extra drilling or anything. Okay so these are some of the these bolts, nuts and washers that I'm using and they go into the angle brackets like that so the washer and then the bolt and apparently I don't need the little ones nuts I think so yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna attach that in for the shelves to rest on So you've got the angle bracket in there with the screw or nut and the washer. I've done that on yeah, each of the corners and then one in the middle. I've done that um, on another level too because they're so dark it's difficult to actually see. But um, yeah, there you go. So now I'm going to put the shelves in. Okay, so that wasn't the easiest thing to do, but that shelf is now in. Okay, <laughs> that one literally just slotted in really easily. So first and back some more. There you go. You can see the sort of gaps that I have. So I have two kind of smaller shelves and then one large one at the bottom. And then just to be safe I'm going to put, oh you can't even see, um, one of these little uh, supports that actually comes with the cabinet and it's what the glass shelves would rest on but it also kind of 
uh, keeps the sort of glass sides in place and attached to the sort of supporting beams. Okay, I've now just attached some zip ties to each of the shelves uh, and to the brackets. Yeah, you can see that clearly there. Just to make sure that they're attached even though they're pretty well wedged in there and I don't think they're moving um, it just makes it a little bit more secure but you can see that there just a little zip tie just to make it more secure so with the shelves in I could then attach the lights and fans to the cabinet so I wanted some grow lights because even though the cabinet is facing quite a big window we're obviously getting into winter and there's not as much light during the day and then I bought fans to make sure the air was circulating around the cabinet because the sort of stagnant humid air would make really good conditions for mould to grow which I definitely don't want bought the wires for the fans and the lights I have seen people just sort of put them through gaps in the bottom of the cabinet which I think you can make sort of big enough for wires depending on how you build it but I took inspiration from other people with cabinets where they had simply made a hole in sort of the bottom of the greenhouse and feed the wires out of there. So again, I asked my very handy boyfriend to make these holes for me. And then had bought some rubber grommets, I think is what, is what they're called. Um, and pop them into the hole to cover up most of the gap so humidity can't escape but the wires can still be fed through to my extension cable which is underneath the cabinet. Okay so I have linked up my lights so I'm gonna have two attached to the top here so one at the back and then one at the front and then the wire is gonna go down this sort of corner and then attached to this bottom shelf is going to be those two um, I'm going to attach those with zip ties onto the ends that actually came with the lights and then the wire will go out of the bottom uh, in yeah probably that hole um, I've also got another hole in the other back left um, to go to the extension cable underneath these ones uh, obviously there aren't any holes to zip tie them to so I'm going to use the double-sided tape that came with the lights and then I might make some adjustments just see how well that sticks and how well that holds when it gets a bit more humid in here. Okay so there's one light up with the double-sided tape and um, it's this stuff it's it's super chunky um, and it feels quite sticky so hopefully it'll be good enough um, but yeah I've just just put the tape on this one and, and I'll peel it off and stick it to the top two. There we go. Now I made a mistake as I was placing it so it's actually going to go down the left hand side instead of that long wire. I have put the two fans into one. Uh, on the back left of the top shelf, sort of facing outwards, and then the other one is on the bottom right side of the cabinet, and that's kind of pointing upwards-ish. These ones are quite easy to move, so I'll see if that positioning works, and move them if it doesn't. So I thought that the strong double-sided tape would be enough to keep the two lights attached to the top of the cabinet but after a few days they kept on falling down. I didn't put any plants on the top shelf just to be safe and it was a good thing that I did because they would have got squashed by the lights. So as the tape wasn't strong enough again I asked my boyfriend to put some holes in the top of the cabinet which I could then screw the lights into and now they feel much more secure and won't damage any plants that I put on the top shelf. As I said in the last video, there is a gap between the doors on the front of the cabinet. So I bought some weather stripping tape type thing. 
and attached it to one side so that when you close the doors there isn't that gap there. I also bought some foam weather stripping tape with the intention of putting that around the other edges of the doors. I haven't added that yet just because I want to see how the humidity stays without doing that but I have got the foam tape there if I need it. So then with the lights and the fans in the cabinet I could then put in all of my plants which is definitely the most fun part. This is what the cabinet looks like now, with the grow lights on. I've got my little plants up at the top, so I've got Syngonium, uh, Tufetonia, Hoya, and then on the second shelf I've got Calathea, Beauty Star, Allegosia Black Velvet, uh, my three polka dot plants, and a little Fetonia. And then on the bottom I have Begonia and Alocasia Red Secret and Anthurium. You may recognise some new plants on there. Uh, I'll be doing a plant haul with them in soon. And just from a little bit further away, that is the current state of this sort of plant wall. I'm really pleased with it and love how it looks in the room and the fact that I'm able to keep an eye on my plants during the day. In terms of other changes that I might make, as I said I've got that weatherproofing foam tape that I might add in and if I run out of space I might put some sort of wire grid or pegboard on the back of the cabinet for little pots to attach to and little plants to hang down. But for now, I think it's exactly what I needed for my tropical plants. If you have any suggestions of other improvements I could make, please let me know, leave me a comment, because other people definitely have way more professional setups than I do. I'm aware this video was mainly a sort of collection of clips smushed together, so I won't be surprised if anything I said isn't clear or if you have questions, just let me know if you do and I'll, I'll respond to them. With all that being said, Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it and as always I'll see you on Friday for another new planty video. Bye!